All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning, I'm Valsa Williams. The headlines. National Security Advisor Rajit Dhawal interacts with people in Kashmir Valley as a confidence building measure. Situation in Jammu and Kashmir remains by and large peaceful. Pakistani troops resort to unprovoked firing in Rajouri district. Loans to get cheaper as RBI cuts repo rates by 35 basis points. Heavy rain continues to affect normal life in different parts of the country. Nation observes 77th anniversary of Quit India movement. And in cricket, India to take on West Indies in the first ODI in Guyana this evening. National Security Advisor Ajit Dhawal yesterday visited Shukya in Jammu and Kashmir and interacted with state police personnel and local people. He arrived in Kashmir on Tuesday to reach out to the local population in the valley as a confidence-building measure. He assured the locals that their security is the government's responsibility and them about their safety in the changed circumstances. Meanwhile, in Jammu and Kashmir, amid imposition of Section 144, situation in all the three regions remained by and large peaceful for the third consecutive day yesterday. According to a senior official of the state administration, some shops opened in Srinagar and the movement of people on the roads picked up yesterday despite the restrictions. However, people in Kashmir Valley remained mostly indoors due to strict enforcement of Section 144. Security agencies have arrested over 500 people, including political leaders and activists. Situation all across Jammu region remained peaceful for the third consecutive day yesterday. Shops too reopened in most parts of Jammu district and private traffic plied normally. In Ramban district of Jammu division, a six-hour relaxation will be given in the ongoing restrictions on the movement of people and vehicles from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. in the major towns except in Banihal. In Riyasi and Katwa districts, government offices and banks will resume functioning from today. However, schools and colleges will continue to remain closed across Jammu Division till further orders. A report. Keeping in view the prevailing situation in Jammu and Kashmir, there is no end to the departure of non-local laborers and tourists with around 10,000 more reaching Udhampur and Jammu railway stations yesterday for their onward journey to their respective state. Most of these workers were working in Kashmir Valley and they reached Udhampur and Jammu as per the directives of the government. Three special trains were run from Udhampur and Jammu to Darbanga, Bihar carrying stranded passengers. R.K. Rana for AIR News from Jammu and Kashmir. Meanwhile, in Kargil district of Ladakh, Section 144 was imposed as a precautionary measure in view of the bunt call given by some political parties. In yet another incident of ceasefire violation in Jammu and Kashmir, Pakistani troops last evening resorted to indiscriminate and unprovoked firing on Indian forward posts and civilian areas in the border district of Rajori in Jammu division. A defense spokesperson told AIR that at about 10.15 p.m., Pakistani troops used small arms fire and shelling with mortars along the line of control in Sundarbani sector. Alert Indian troops gave a befitting reply to the Pakistani roaring guns. The exchange of fire between the two armies continued till 2.30 a.m. today. No report of any damage was reported from the Indian side. This was the third ceasefire violation along the LOC in the past four days. Loans are said to get cheaper as the Reserve Bank of India cut repo rate by 35 basis points to 5.40% yesterday. The move is said to give a fillip to the economy. This was the fourth consecutive time that the Monetary Policy Committee reduced the rates. Within hours of the steep reduction in the repo rates, country's largest lender, State Bank of India, announced a 15 basis points reduction in its lending rates. The SBI in a statement said the new rates of 8.25% will be effective from the 10th of this month. After this cut, SBI home loans have become cheaper by 35 basis points since April. The bank is offering a repo linked home loans since 1st July this year. The CBI has sought permission to conduct polygraph and narco-analysis tests on Gokulnath Shetty, a key conspirator in the multi-crore Punjab National Bank fraud. The former deputy manager at PNB's Brady House branch in Mumbai was arrested in March last year. In the application, moved before special CBI judge J.C. Jagdale, 
The agency has said that it needs to know about monetary benefits received by the accused. It adds that the assets and quid pro quo revealed so far during the investigation is minuscule as compared to the quantum of the fraud. The court will hear the plea on the 14th of August. The Election Commission notified the bipol to one seat of the Rajya Sabha in Uttar Pradesh yesterday. A commission release said that nominations for the lone seat of Rajya Sabha bipol can be submitted up to the 14th of August. The scrutiny of papers will be done on the 16th of August. The last date for withdrawals is the 19th of August. The polling, if required, would be held on the 26th of August and the results will be declared the same day. The seat fell vacant due to the resignation of Samajwadi Party member Neeraj Shekhar, who has joined the BJP. Members of the Indian diaspora across different sections of British society paid tributes to Sushma Swaraj, the former external affairs minister who died of cardiac arrest. Leading NRI industrialist Lord Swaraj Paul, chairman of Asocham UK Vijay Goel and the Hinduja family, described her as a wonderful person who was extremely proactive in the sphere of India-UK ties. The last rites of Sushma Swaraj were performed with full state honours at Lodhi Crematorium in New Delhi last evening. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates... For quick news updates, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. The 77th anniversary of the Quit Tinder movement, an important milestone in the freedom struggle of the country, is being observed today. Speaking at a special function held in the Parliament on the 75th anniversary of the movement, Prime Minister Narendra Modi lauded valuable contribution of the freedom fighters and emphasized the significance of August Kranti in the long-drawn struggle. In 1942 एक ऐसी पीठी का तैयार हुई थी 1857 का स्वतंत्रता संग्राम एक साथ देश के हर कोने में आजादी का बिगुल बजा था Here is a report from our correspondent In early August 1942 almost the entire leadership of the Indian National Congress was imprisoned without the trial within hours of Gandhi ji's speech the British government arrested thousands of leaders and kept them imprisoned until 1945 In terms of immediate objectives quit india movement failed because of heavy handed suppression weak coordination and lack of a clear cut programs of action however the british government realized that it was not possible to govern india in the long run and the question became just how to exit gracefully and peacefully with sunil dabir ankush watts air news new delhi heavy rain continues to affect normal life in different parts of the country In Karnataka, downpour in North Interior and coastal regions has taken a toll of around seven people. Chief Minister B.S. Yadirapa will conduct aerial survey of the flood-affected areas today. Krishna, Kaveri, Tungabhadra and Netravati rivers are in spate. A joint rescue team of fire and emergency, SDRF, NDRF and Army have evacuated over 25,000 people in Belagavi district. More from our correspondent. Incessant showers and swelling rivers have thrown normal life out of gear in Malnad, North Karnataka and parts of Kodugu and Mysuru. National Highway 73 passing through Charmadi Ghat is closed down. Several vehicles bound to Dharmasthala and Mangaluru are stranded at Kotigehara. National Highway 66 and 275 are also shut down. Several other roads in Belagavi and Western Ghats are shut down due to landslide and flooding. Railway has cancelled train to Karwar and an overnight train from Bengaluru to Mangaluru. The school Schools and colleges have been declared holidays in several districts affected by heavy showers. Sudhindra, AIR News, Bengaluru. The flood situation also remains grim in the western part of Maharashtra as incessant rains continue to hit Kolhapur, Sangli, Satara, Pune and Solapur districts. Our correspondent reports that 16 people lost their lives. 
All dams in the region are overflowing, leading to excessive floods, also majorly affecting road and rail traffic in this district. Over 23 teams of NDRF are involved in relief and rescue operation in coordination with state authorities, Navy, Army, Air Force and Coast Guard. All schools and colleges remained closed in Sangli, Satar and Kolhapur districts yesterday. Maharashtra Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis yesterday held a review meeting with all the concerned ministers and district collectors. He will be visiting Kolhapur and Sangli districts today to take stock of the flood situation. CTJ Air News, Mumbai. In Kerala, the Met Department has issued an alert in various districts along with landslide and flood warnings. At some places, fishermen have been advised not to venture out into the sea owing to high winds. In Uttar Pradesh as well, many parts of the state received heavy to moderate rain yesterday. And as per the Met Department, this situation is going to prevail for some time. At least 14 people lost their lives due to rain-related incidents. Veteran director J. Om Prakash passed away in Mumbai yesterday. He was 93. His last rites were performed in the presence of family and friends. Prakash was best known for his box office hits like Aapki Kasam, Ay Din Bahar Ke, Asha and Andhi. In Afghanistan, at least 18 people were killed and more than 100 injured in a huge explosion in the capital yesterday. Government officials say it appears that a car bomb went off outside a police station five kilometers west of central Kabul. The Taliban claimed responsibility for the attack, saying in a statement it had targeted police and soldiers. The blast was the latest in a series of terrorist attacks ahead of next month's presidential election. The top American and British diplomats today said they are prepared to move as soon as possible on a trade deal after Britain's planned withdrawal from the European Union EU on the 31st of October this year. Speaking in Washington, British Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab urged the EU to negotiate a new pact on Britain's departure to avoid a potentially calamitous no-deal Brexit. Rob said after meeting the United States Secretary of State Mike Pompeo that the two sides agreed on the need for quick negotiations on a two-way deal after Brexit strands Britain outside the U.S.-EU trade pact. The first one-day international match of the three ODI series between India and West Indies will be played at Guyana National Stadium today. The match will start at 7 p.m. IST. All India Radio will broadcast running commentary on the match from 6.30 p.m. onwards. It will be available on AIR's Rajthani Channel, FM Rainbow Network and other frequencies. The other two matches will be held on August the 11th and 14th at the Queen's Park Oval in Trinidad. India defeated West Indies in the 2020 series 3-0. And now for an overview of today's newspapers. It's over to Anucha Kumar. Thank you, Balsa. Pakistan's response over the Jammu and Kashmir situation is the lead across the newspapers. Pak goes on diplomatic offensive over Article 370 is the Hindustan Times headline. The Hindu reports Pakistan expels Indian envoy, suspends bilateral trade. Downgrading ties, Pak tests Kashmir waters, India holds response, observes the Indian Express. On the prevailing situation in Jammu and Kashmir, the pioneer states, Valley erupts again, cops, stone pelters hurt in clash. The Times of India reports, government may ease security measures in Valley for Friday prayers and Eid. On the final journey of BJP leader Sushma Swaraj, the Asian Age writes, India bids farewell to people's Neta Sushma. Swaraj cremated with state honours, tributes pour in, notes the statesman. RBI cuts repo rate by 35 basis points to 9-year low, reduces growth forecast by 10 basis points for the fiscal year to 6.9% on slumping demand is the lead in the Economic Times. And finally, there might be life on the moon after all. The Hindustan Times in a front page box item reports of thousands of virtually indestructible microscopic earthlings who likely made it out alive following a crash landing on the lunar surface by Israel's bearish sheet probe in April. And with that, it's back to you, Valsa. Thank you, Anuja. Now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. National Security Advisor Ajit Doval interacts with people in Kashmir Valley as a confidence-building measure. Situation in Jammu and Kashmir remains by and large peaceful. Pakistani troops resort to unprovoked firing in Rajori district. Loans to get cheaper as RBI cuts repo rates by 35 basis points. Heavy rain continues to affect normal life in different parts of the country. Nation observes 77th anniversary of Quit India movement. And in cricket, India to take on West Indies in the first ODI in Guyana. 
this evening. For details of these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.com. With that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.